what's up everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to the review of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. It is that time of year again and Apple has come up with their flagships for 2014 through to most of 2015 and it is without a doubt that they have answered many of the questions we have been asking over the past few months leading up to Apple's redesign of the iPhone. At first I wasn't sure if it made sense to review both of these devices in the same video but in the end I decided that they were in theory the same device on the inside with the only difference really coming in the form factor. So just to get the specs out of the way the iPhones are powered by an Apple A8 processor which is dual core 64 bit and clocked in at 1.4 gigahertz. Although it is dual core and pretty much every flagship Android device nowadays is a quad core device you will see from my benchmark tests that the individual core performance was very impressive and that is accompanied by one gig of ram so stepping away from that i wanted to talk a little bit about the form factor the iphone 6 seems to be a size that is perfect and from using it for the past three weeks i've really come to enjoy the form factor and never did i find it too large nor too small on the other hand, the iPhone 6 Plus is an absolutely massive phone. It comes in at about 6.22 inches tall and 3 inches in width. So right off the bat, you should know that it is not a phone for everyone. It is geared towards a very particular type of consumer who would feel comfortable lugging such a large device around with them at all times. But it is great that Apple has offered a device at a 4.7 inch display and a 5.5 inch display as I feel that the 4.7 inch screen size is the perfect one for the iPhone. The device is still made out of aluminum and feels amazing in the hand with its nice tapered edges along the display and it measures in at just 6.9mm thick for the 6 and 7.1mm thick for the 6 Plus. However, although aluminum has been commended positively for the most part, the iPhone 6 Plus in particular has had its fair share of controversy with the bend gate where users have reported issues of their device bending from normal use, but personally, after the past 3 weeks of using it, I haven't noticed any bending on my unit. But my word of advice to the average consumer is to go ahead and check out both the devices in store to figure out which one is the right size for you. As you can see in my case, the iPhone 6 Plus, at least making calls and using in general, does seem quite awkward as it is just far too large. But I have come to love using the device when I'm not out and about, mainly for media consumption and the way you're able to read articles and text on such a large display. On the bottom you will find your 8-pin lightning dock connector for charging and syncing, as well as your 3.5mm headphone jack, your set of speakers, and you will also notice that the sleep-wake switch is actually moved over to the side now on the right side, and a lot of people actually found that extremely weird when they first saw the iPhone 6. As I said before, the iPhone 6 comes in at 4.7 inches, while the iPhone 6 Plus comes in at 5.5. The iPhone 6 has a resolution of 1334 by 750 at a PPI of 326 and on the iPhone 6 Plus you've got a full HD 1080p resolution with a PPI of 401. And I'll be totally honest with you, I was quite disappointed at first when I realized that the PPI wasn't significantly over the 400 mark but from using the device I really have no complaints of the display at all. So now let's take some time to talk about the software. With the major overhaul of iOS 7 coming last year, you would expect that iOS 8 is just going to be some improvements and additional features added to one of the biggest iOS updates ever. And that is pretty much the case here. When you first look at the software, it is very hard to kind of straight up see some additional features built into the software. And a lot of people did ask me what exactly is changed in iOS 8, and I actually had quite a hard time coming up with answers right away. A lot of which are some small functional tweaks here and there and under the hood, but there are also many integration features and continuity that we will see in OS 10 Yosemite that is coming out soon. But in terms of the general software and its integration, they have borrowed a few features of Android and I really don't mind that as that is always a good thing for the consumer. You will see with the multitasking now, they do have the options on the top for who you have recently contacted, as well as stuff like a predictive keyboard and the ability to be able to use third party keyboards as well as widgets located in the notification tab if you like to add them and you will also see the health app and also the upcoming Apple Pay. Though there have been numerous complaints of iOS 8 being a pretty bad update, I have found that on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus at least, it has been extremely smooth and I haven't noticed any major issues. 
On the iPhone 6 Plus, however, it does have a few tricks up its sleeve to kind of separate it from the iPhone 6, and it will be very interesting to see whether developers take advantage of that display and have possibly a landscape mode as we have seen a few apps integrate in the iPhone 6 Plus. With both devices, you are able to use it in a standard or zoomed in mode, and you can see that as an example of the zoomed in mode and then the standard mode where everything is just a little bit more spaced out. And I know for older people, they would prefer the zoomed in mode but personally, I kind of like the fact that you're able to take advantage of more screen less state on the iPhone 6 Plus and be able to view more on your display. As Apple did talk about as well is the landscape mode, which allows you to use apps such as the Mail app and the Messages app and kind of have it in a two-tab view. In order to reach the top of the display, Apple has also had a feature where you can double tap or not click on your home button and that will bring down the display for you to reach it. That is also a feature seen on the iPhone. 6. One thing I've also noticed with the iPhone 6 Plus is that typing in portrait mode is an absolute joy. I feel like my fingers are able to reach everything perfectly and my typing accuracy is just much better on this display. But in landscape mode, it is a completely different story. You can see that they have condensed it to the middle, which makes it hard to reach. And you often do press these things on the side that I never found myself using by accident. But what I really think in the end will separate the iPhone 6 Plus from the rest and possibly drive more sales towards it is to have apps optimized for the 5.5 inch display and its landscape mode, kind of like how we see optimized iPad apps. So now it's time to move on to a very exciting part of this video. I have to say when Apple first told us the camera was going to be once again 8 megapixels and capable of shooting 1080p video, I was quite disappointed. Like the display size, I was hoping that Apple would finally go big and jump to something like 10 or 13 megapixels to get that insane sharpness we see on some Android phones. But when I saw the photos that these phones were capable of taking, I pretty much put all those thoughts behind me. Both these devices sport an 8 megapixel EyeSight camera with a 1.5 micron pixel size, face detection autofocus, and f2.2 aperture. And one of the few differences between these two devices is that the iPhone 6 Plus features optical image stabilization. With both these devices, you do have quite a few modes as well as a few extra modes that we saw this year. There is photo, square photo, panoramic, video, there's even a time lapse mode which I've had a lot of fun using, as well as a slow motion mode that now lets you record in 240 frames or 120, and also 1080p video at up to 60 frames per second. And the camera on these iPhones, as they were before, took very consistent images, which is one of the reasons why the iPhone camera has always in a way been my favorite. One of the best features that I noticed is the face detection autofocus system, which pretty much allows me to just rip the phone out of my pocket, take a picture, and when you go back to look at it, it was always in focus. The focusing is lightning fast, even if you don't see it actually doing it. And from looking at all these test photos, you've got to admit, this camera, considering it is 8 megapixels on the spec sheet, takes some very impressive shots. Here's just a look at the 1080p video test on the iPhone 6 Plus and like I mentioned it does have optical image stabilization. And here's just some shots from the iPhone 6. Now it's just a quick test of the time lapse feature and I'm actually pretty proud of this time lapse, it is very cool. And lastly a 240 frame slow motion in 720p. So 
so now that we have touched on pretty much everything about these devices, the last thing and a very important thing I would like to talk about is the battery life. One of the biggest pet peeves I've had with iPhones in the past is the battery life. And before Apple released the iPhone 6, the two biggest things I was wishing for was a larger display and a larger battery and I would be completely sold. The iPhone 6 features a 1810mAh battery, while the iPhone 6 Plus features a 2915mAh battery, and I'm glad to report that the battery life is up to my satisfaction this time around. I can very easily get a full day on the iPhone 6 at heavy use, which is something I wasn't able to do with the 5S, and on the iPhone 6 I'm able to get about a day and a half to sometimes two days on heavy use. Though at the same time, some would argue that Apple has tried too hard to make the device so thin that they could have increased the size by about a millimeter and get rid of the protruding camera and also increase the battery significantly and possibly the durability of the iPhone 6 Plus. But with the battery being the most important thing about every device that some people do overlook, I would say that it is at least to my satisfaction and not having to lug around a battery pack with me all day long. So that pretty much concludes my review of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus and so far I have been very happy with these two devices and the iPhone 6 is my daily driver and I feel like it will be for quite a while. I'm just so used to the iOS ecosystem and I'm a Mac user so the continuity in Yosemite that is coming up should be very nice as well. The iPhone 6 Plus on the other hand is a very fun device to use but in terms of the convenience it just isn't for me since it is just so damn large. But I definitely recommend everyone to check out both of these devices in person and figure out which one is right for you in terms of the size. But I will tell you the iPhone 6 is ultimately going to be the decision for most people. But other than that, be sure to let me know down in the comments section which one you have picked up or are planning to pick up and what you think of it. And hit that like button while you're at it if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one.